Hey everyone, I'm Richard, I run Digital Foundry and today we have a very special video podcast about the specs for the Nintendo Switch and joining me to discuss the technical minutiae is Tom Morgan. Nice to be here. <laughs> it certainly is. So, right, the reason we're doing this video podcast is there was a uh, post on Venture Beat, I think it was. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, they Games had... Beat. Yep, Games Beat. And they had uh, the specs of the Switch. Now, not anything in depth, but uh, a few pointers there which have got some people concerned, upset, uh, others kind of nodding their heads sagely. Mm -hmm. And um, so what we're going to do today is go over those specs and we're also going to add new information about the Switch. Now, just to give you some background here, um, our general way of working is that we collect sources as many as we can before we press the go button on any story. So for example, we broke the story about Tegra X1, uh, or rather NVIDIA Tegra technology being in the Switch, I think it was July this year, something like that. Right, yeah. Yeah, it was on par with uh, Tom Phillips' story on Eurogamer about what the Switch actually was. So we actually worked together on that story. Uh, and I went with the tech angle, he went with the, the concept angle. And um, yeah, at the time we said Tegra X1, we haven't really said so much about the Switch since. No, there were a quite a few rumours and leaks of specs in the meantime, weren't there? Mm, um, some yeah. suggestions that it was going with the uh, you know X1 or maybe the X2, mm. but we couldn't hammer down exactly what it was. Um, but well, today it's a different story. Well, here's the thing: uh, the Venture Beat story actually corroborates a leak that was on Twitter. Uh, this particular spec sheet, which was essentially a Tegra X1. Uh, exactly as we said back in July. Now we haven't really added anything to that because the sources that we've got are still saying Tegra X1 or like a customized variant of it essentially. But in terms of the core spec, it is Tegra X1. And uh, what's interesting about the Venture Beat story is that they are saying exactly the same thing. Yeah, it's a Maxwell chip, not a Pascal, as some people maybe uh, hopefully you know thought it well, would be. Well, you know, to be fair, I understand that entirely because if you look at Nvidia's blog post, um, when the Switch was announced, they were talking about um, the Switch GPU being based on the most powerful graphics cards, which, logical deduction, Pascal, yes. uh, not Maxwell. Uh, there isn't, you know, um, Titan X Pascal is, and not that surprisingly, was, that, Pascal. Yeah, that was dated <laughs> summer this year, so yeah. you're thinking, okay, Pascal makes sense. That's, yeah, and that's even, where if it wasn't going. The, if you, even if the Titan X Pascal wasn't the most powerful GPU, GTX 1080 was, which is still Pascal. So mm. the notion that it's not Pascal kind of, you know, contradicts a primary source of public information, which is Nintendo, which is Nvidia's actual reveal that they are doing the GPU exactly as we said. So according to the Venture Beat story, this was due to a delay, not the Pascal uh, sort of X1, X2 chip mm. not being available by the mm. time it would ship. Yep. Um, and also related to the fact that the Switch was announced when it was, and that gave the com competition a heads up in terms of, um, you know, Nintendo not wanting to be beaten to the punch on the concept of the hybrid pad. Yeah. Okay. So that so, I means coming early 2017. Right. Okay. So I've got a few thoughts on that. First of all, Tegra X1 debuted at an event I attended at GDC 2015. Uh, that was where the Shield Android TV was announced. So it's old technology at this point. This is the Shield Android TV, and um, yeah. <laughs> That's, that is indeed the core technology which we now believe to be in the Switch. And I should say, uh, my own sources uh, that have been briefed by Nintendo in the sort of uh, time scale after we revealed the Switch specs of being based on Nvidia Tegra, uh, they had the Maxwell spec sheet as well. I was kind of wondering, I didn't actually run with that information at the time simply because, well, you know, we had the post from Nvidia which was saying Pascal. Now maybe, you know, at an architectural level, a um, CUDA core of the Maxwell variety is very, very similar to a Pascal one. So the only difference is really in terms of the process. So 28 nanometers or rather 20 nanometers for uh, Tegra X1 versus 16 nanometer FinFET for Pascal. Uh, we kind of wanted 16 nanometer. It's an odd choice because it's rare that you see 20 nanometers, uh, that jump. 
Yeah, I mean, I think maybe uh, Nvidia just had, uh, uh, you know, capacity on the production line at TSMC. Who knows? But the point is, is that um, I was kind of hoping because we had this uh, delay of the switch until March 2017, it kind of would tie into 16 nanometer being more available. And maybe it is a 16 nanometer chip. We still don't know for sure. But the point is that the specifications that we've seen are Tegra X1, not X2, not Pascal, not Parker. And it is a customized variant. We don't know what the customizations are, but it's not going to change stuff like pure compute capability uh, or um, you know, any, anything related to the CPU cores. Uh, if we actually look at the spec that was leaked on Twitter, which uh, I should say that developers have been briefed on this spec and there's a lot of people that think it's fake. Um, maybe it's out of date, but it certainly gives an idea of what the spec actually is. And it's you know, four Cortex ARM 8, uh, 57s. Okay. Um, so sticking with the ARM architecture for Nintendo, that's yeah. familiar for them. Well, yeah, it is essentially the only uh, CPU architecture that NVIDIA has available. They've got their own Denver core, which is actually in the X2, but it's not a great fit, I don't think, for a handheld games machine. Right. So there's that. And we have... 256 Maxwell CUDA cores. The low power CPU cores are absent from the spec sheet. They might still be on the die. The Google Pixel C tablet uses X1 and those low power cores don't appear to be utilized at all. So maybe the Pixel tablet is more in line with what we'd expect from uh, an eventual switch machine in terms of the power usage mm, of the chip? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> well, here we go. Um, the, okay, so we're going to sort of break an exclusive here, which is the clock speeds of the switch. Now, the Google tablet has two gigahertz CPU cores and it's believed to be 850 megahertz on the GPU. Okay. So that's still lower than that this That is still lower here. than than this. Okay. Uh, and one thing we need to bear in mind about this is that, you know, this is the fully enabled X1 running at the maximum clocks that it can uh, uh, comfortably run at in this sort of, you know, with this sort of thermal solution. Plugged into the wall. Plugged into the wall. Yeah. So what are we getting with the switch? <laughs> okay, right. CPU is one gigahertz rather than the two gigahertz in this. Actually, okay. to be strictly speaking, it's 1,020 megahertz. So round that to a gigahertz. Yeah, yeah one gigahertz. Yeah, Basically, 50% of the utilization of this, uh, which, you know. And the one gigahertz clock speed on the CPU or is always in effect regardless of its yeah. clock now here's the thing. Yeah. Held. Now, there's obviously been a lot of conjecture about the difference between the switch running undocked and docked. Now, the first uh, instance that I heard that this was an issue was when a developer was saying to me that it is effectively a case that they kind of have to produce two different SKUs. Right, because there's a radical difference there's in There's a spec. radical difference in GPU speed. Now, the good news is at least that CPU speed, whether you're docked or undocked, is 1,020 megahertz. It makes point. sense because game logic has to run and yeah. operate with you the same parameters. You, yeah, exactly. You can't suddenly, you know, remove pull 50. the rug from under the exactly feet. yeah i yeah. mean it would require fundamental changes to uh, the code not good at all so that uh 1.02 gigahertz what is, is the locked. gpu then gpu okay let's do the docked one first uh 768 megahertz and undocked okay hold on to your hats 307.2 megahertz 307.2. 307.2 megahertz. This is what you get when you have the switch undocked in your hands. And uh, I, I can't help but kind of smile at that. Yeah, um, it's kind of funny. I get the idea that, you know, Nintendo don't talk specs generally. That's true. They, took, you know, they show experiences and generally the games are awesome. And uh, that is the sort of thing you need to focus on. So we recently saw Zelda running on the Switch on the Jimmy Fallon show. Yeah, it, albeit from uh, off-camera sort yeah. of view. Yeah, it, it, I mean, the, the number one observation we had while looking at that was, wow, we've never seen this game look so smooth. It's yeah. never played so well. Mm -hmm. Now, we've not seen the Wii U version running in like the final build or a build equivalent to mm -hmm. that. And it may well have improved since we last saw it. Of course we saw the frame rates weren't all that great. They weren't great at all, but um, you know, the good news is at least that the Switch version is looking really, really nice. Now, if that was running undocked, right? You saw it running. It was, yeah. Okay, so here's the thing. Switch has 720p 6.2 inch screen. Now, 
if we are docking it and we are effectively, uh, well, we're over doubling the, um, uh, the GPU core speed, then it may well be the case that you can indeed have 720p on the switch screen and 1080p on the uh, HDTV. Yeah, it's within the realms of believability, isn't it? Because we're jumping from a what 640p screen on gamepad. I suppose 720p. 720 native, native would be the whole. On the Wii U. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you know, from my perspective, I'm kind of not really too upset by this. I know a lot of guys out there wanted third-party ports, and they've seen Skyrim, but you know, Skyrim. Is a you know well, it's a five yeah. year old game. Yeah, that's a last gen. Game. That's a last that's gen game, and you know the games uh, the Wii U missed out on in the first place. Yeah. So I suppose you could see it in two ways. You could see it as the the most powerful handheld Nintendo have ever produced, mm -hmm. which is a fair uh, uh, qualification yeah. of it. Or you could be a little bit disappointed on the home console front and say, well, it's uh, uh, an iteration. It's a, more powerful than the Wii U certainly, but it's a long ways off from the generation sort of uh, standard. Yeah, uh, you know, I realise there's a lot of people that are not going to be happy with the clocks and might, you know, rather than take the information uh, at face value, you know, would sort of attempt to come up with theories as to why it's not true. But, you know, let's talk about specifics here. This is taking up to 20 watts from the wall with a 2 gigahertz CPU, 1 gigahertz GPU. Compare and contrast with your standard handheld, the uh, Vita, uh, including the screen, which obviously this doesn't have, uh, is drawing about three to four watts. And that's kind of what you need to have uh, decent battery life, you know. Mm. I think uh, an iPad is something like six to 10 watts at maximum. Mm. And you so, get a good life out of that. Anyway. And you get, you know, six to 10 hours. And majority so. of the build inside that is battery. Anyway. Is battery, yeah. yeah. And obviously the Switch is smaller. It's not as big as the Pixel C or the iPad, uh, the larger iPad. Right. Well, Nintendo has previous on this, don't they? Because they got their start in the handheld business with very battery efficient, yeah, uh, portable. It's kind of not so. been so efficient in recent times. I mean, True. 3DS yeah. was like what four to five hours. I got yeah, maybe three and a half really? hours out of the original 3DS, and then they improved it with the XL. But right. generally, this has been the the sort of selling point of uh, Nintendo. They they kind of downclock everything until it's um, a rock solid, a practical device to use yep. out in the wild. So, and there's another thing to bear in mind, which is thermal throttling. Now, uh, on a tablet, um, for example. Uh, if the device gets too hot, the clocks go down. So you'll see a lot of um, benchmarks where uh, essentially stuff like 3D Mark is run for like an hour. And you can kind of see the frame rates over time go down as the device gets hotter. So in lowering the clocks on the Switch, what Nintendo is trying to do is A, uh, give you a decent battery life. And B, well, you can't give developers a device where, you know, extended playtime is going to result in depressed frame rates. Mm. So they've actually got to operate on a kind of worst case scenario in terms of you know thermal dissipation, that kind of thing. You can't have a throttling device. So this is why I believe uh, the spec is as kind of low as it is. And it kind of makes sense. Now, you know, it's all going to come down to the quality of the experience. And if they've got better than Wii U performance, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a, as a kind of baseline experience. Yeah. Better than Wii U performance in a handheld console that scales up to an HDTV friendly resolution when it's docked. Problem solved, it's, it's not too it, bad, is it? It seems pretty good to me now. You know, the, the issue is, is that of course, we live in a world of PlayStation 4 Pros, um, Xbox One S's, but it's yeah. an entirely different proposition. That isn't what Nintendo are, are doing. Well, they opted out of the arms race uh, a decade ago, basically. You yeah. know, I mean, just... when was the last tech competitive device, the uh, GameCube? It was the GameCube, for so, sure. So, you know, on the one hand, there are um, disappointments here. I really would hope that it is a 16 nanometer chip, but if we look at those clocks, kind of suggest 20 to me. I wonder if it'll be 20 at launch and then they'll have an iterative sort of uh, yeah, mid-gen. Yeah, like the 3DS, like, uh, the new 3DS, uh, yeah, for yeah. example. Or DSi, that sort of thing. They, Nintendo always do this and it never really affects the original owners too radically. It's like a few games use the, uh, yeah. the advantages of that, um, that spec change, but 
I would that. think uh, generally if they're going to be moving uh, to a lower process node, I would be taking the extra battery life and complete consistency with the existing uh, library of titles. Yeah, this is one of the perks of the 3DS revision. That was the first mm. thing they announced is better, better battery life on yeah. the, uh, mm -hmm. the new model. So. so yeah, that's what we got. That's basically what we've got in terms of the spec. And, uh, there is some news of uh, the games and specifically yeah. the back compat support for GameCube. Yeah, Tom Phillips on Eurogamer, another fantastic scoop there, uh, was looking at uh, GameCube Virtual Console. And obviously, you know, you did the tests on this. Yes, it was a long, long stretch of testing on yeah. the, I had a nightmare because we were obviously using uh, the Dolphin emulator, unofficial. Mm -hmm. uh, Nowhere near as optimized as Nintendo would have it on yeah. their system uh, where they know the hardware inside and out. Uh, but nevertheless, I gave it a good shot and, and saw what it could. this machine here could do mm -hmm. uh, with Luigi's Mansion, which is confirmed, I think, from Tom Phillips' uh, article that uh, is, is yeah, coming Melee, from Switch. wasn't it? Smash Brothers Melee. Melee. A lot of uh, uh, the fighting game crowd will be pleased with that one. Mm -hmm. um, and since we don't really have support for that game on the Wii U, it's nice to have that come back. And was there another one? I can't recall. Mario Sunshine? That's the one. That's the one. Yep. Uh, which it's quite I think interesting that you actually tested most of these titles on the Gold Dolphin yes. emulator. I missed out Melee, which I, right. I regret. But uh, <laughs> Luigi's Mansion and uh, Mario Sunshine are accounted for, and they both played, I mean, GameCube games, as a rule of thumb, played really well at, I think, uh, was I tried 1080p, I believe, and they ran pretty well. Like yeah, that. obviously, we've got reduced GPU clocks on the Switch, but we have uh, mm. direct access to the hardware, and I would venture to suggest that Nintendo knows its own hardware better than the Dolphin developers, yes. so yeah. we should get a really optimized experience. The, there. the question is, I suppose, whether we'll end up with uh, Wii, Backward compatibility uh, for you know the, the games that I tested using this machine here yeah. it wasn't quite so uh, solid in yeah. terms of the frame rate. Uh, the Wii U stuff seems to be accounted for by just straight ports like Splatoon uh, is heavily rumored to be there and uh, a few others, Mario mm -hmm. Maker. But uh, I think that's kind of about where we're at at the moment with the Switch. Obviously, in um, January we're going to be going to the event to go hands-on with the machine. Looking forward to that. Uh, looking forward to some Mario and Zelda and mm. uh, it's got a strong uh, lineup. I mean, it's Pokemon as well. Uh, right. Port. Okay. Seems like all, all the uh, uh, intersection between everything they did on the Wii U and the 3DS coming together mm -hmm. in one. So it's going to be quite quite a great launch period, I think. Yeah. Okay. So going to leave it there for now. Uh, please do like and subscribe to support the work we do at Digital Foundry. And if you really value what we do, remember that we have the Digital Foundry Patreon, where you can pay five dollars a month and get access to everything we do in super high quality. But in the meantime, thank you, Tom. No worries. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you soon.